just a fantastic series for a second game of the day. There goes all the way to a game five. And uh, you know what? They, they did it, Phil. They, yeah. they did it. They composed themselves. It looks a little bit as if the reverse sweep was going to happen. But the boys, uh, they came out on top. Yeah, I mean, you've got to be proud of them for that. I think yesterday, just kind of the way that they ended, obviously, v e G versus EG was very, very unfortunate for them. They come in today with a game that they definitely can win. Yeah. Obviously, United, their current form, you know, you start Division B, you would have definitely favored United. I actually did go into this anyway. Um, but it, it, it was just, it was kind of... That momentum that kind right. of Unilad started to get, and of course it did go the full five maps. I'm, I'm so surprised the way it actually ended, to be honest. <laughs> it's funny, Joe, because you mentioned, you, you know, after that horrible game five loss yesterday for Unilad, I mean, you heard Scraps mention it there. If it had lost this game five as well, that plane <laughs> ride home, uh, it would have been a little bit brutal, let's just say that. Yeah, and again, man, like going into the vetoes, if I'm United, like, why am I playing them on London Docks or St. Marie? You have to try and take one of those away. Like, this was just a comfortable win for Unilad. They looked very good. They were able to outslay Scraps, having, again, a, a very great, uh, solid series. But it just seemed like, it, once again, every time United, they rotated, it, they got broken apart, just like what we, we, we saw there on that lower docks. There's just some rotating issues, it feels like. Uh, but again, uh, United, their hard point continues to struggle. Yep, definitely does, despite Arsenal's having a, a, a monstrous game. I mean, you see it there. It's 34. 24, but just not enough, Phil. Yeah, the other three not on the not on the same level, obviously as that. And yes, you can have a great game, but uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be tough to kind of close that out when it's just you know one player going off. Great to obviously see RST playing well, but it wasn't you know it wasn't a stomping 250 to 230. <laughs> no. Definitely a, a close game. You can see as the breakdown goes through. So close. That's and there was one second crazy. right on that second hill that if if that tick doesn't go through through e United or set up lower docks, they potentially win the game. But uh. uh Again, it, it was, overall, Unilad had to lead the entire game. They didn't let it slip. It got a little scary there at the end, but, mm -hmm. you know, they, they they handled their business. I think for Unilad's perspective, across all game modes, they seem to be getting big chunks of time, big leads. Yeah. It's just now learning how to close those big leads out, Joe. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I feel like every game is pretty close with them, but they're controlling most of it. Like, you go on board, they have early streaks. Like, what well, we'll see with St. Marie. And, uh, I mean, yeah, I think that's one of the things that they just have to figure out to do. With just Maybe it's a player or two that, are, that is just slowing down. But, yeah, search and destroy. Well, this was a, a comfortable, well, not comfortable win, but it was a lot of defensive wins. <laughs> uh, this did go the distance, but I think the big thing here was E United, man. Like, I, I was sitting down with uh, Burns and just watching their offenses. It, it just feels like they give away way too many free kills. They don't make it difficult on the defenders. And uh, uh, again, e, uh, Unilad having a, a great search and destroy on Forest. Uh, I, I, well, I like the way that kind of Scraps touched on it at the, uh, the post-game interview there, that they're happy with the hard point. They're happy with the search and destroy. I'd be happy with three people running into me single file yeah, like that, that as well. That can't happen. That yeah, can't happen on an offense. Throw, throw a stun at him, throw yeah. a nade at him, do something, right? Or, or just push to get coordinate, communicate. That, that's what happens. Search and destroy is so important to play your life. Uh, if you're going to bait, if you're going to go out, uh, you know, bell or, or through that little L, do it together and then... Yeah. <laughs> It, it seems so simple, but I think maybe that's just lack of communication. Maybe that's just a slip up. Uh, I, I just expect better from E United. I look at E United and I think they're a top global team. They should be fighting for for like the top two in this group. And I yeah. just I, I, I don't see how this fallen apart so quickly. And, it, and it's like a sim it's simple things, right? Like when you go back and watch that search and destroy, especially offenses. There's that three piece. There's another two piece for scraps. Like early on, where him and his brother. There's a simple round where they go for an offensive push. It might have even been one of the last two where Shawnee just throws a stun. Mid like if you're gonna smoke and, and, and hit middle map like you have to use armor you have to protect yourself for some way because as, as soon as Shawnee then stuns those players in the middle for E United that's when the collapse happens from both A and B bomb site so it's just the simple things from E United just aren't working or, or just aren't there sure I, I actually want to go ahead and uh, take a quick look at the CWL play of the game of course we mentioned it goes all the way to a round 11 of course this is presented by scuff gaming you know what do clutch up but uh, but again it's just unbelievably close fashion that these maps are going yeah it really isn't I, again a prime example is around around 11 a search and destroy which goes down to the wild uh but this is the play yeah there's that stun and then it, that happens scraps then a, able to see that angle so now how do Ian and react they do a great job pushing together but again they open themselves up to a round I like this play call, though. They know there's only one player at A, but this is the play of the game here. He does a great job staying alive. He wraps back towards that cabin window, wins the first gunfight with a nice little pre-fire, and then just plays that bomb site perfectly.
Yeah. I love that first pre-fire, by the way. It's just such a heads-up play. Uh, and something that that pre-fire, he could start shooting. If it's wrong and he goes any other way, then you're in you're in deep water there. But it, it plays out for him. Great stuff from Wuska. Definitely does. Junior Light, of course, at this point, 2-0 up in the series. And so this is where things start to get a little bit shaky if you're a, a European Call of Duty Esports <laughs> fan. That's for sure. We, we head over towards CTF. Uh, of course, Joe, we've talked a little bit about the way Junior Light play their CTF. It, it is very much a kind of defensive orientated playstyle, I think, is probably the, the best yeah. way of explaining it. Normally, though, they're pretty effective, but when they do get the flag out, they tend to translate it uh, to flag caps, but this was one of those games where, sadly, it just didn't work out. Yeah, I mean, United just got out to an early lead. Then if you're Unilad, you sort of can't play to your strength, which is that just sort of sort of defensive, try to get a counter-pull playstyle. Right. There was some big plays, like Silly had that three-piece. Again, you felt like Unilad had a couple of great attacks that, well, it could have turned into something, and it just didn't. Uh, but yeah, I mean, this this four CTF, I, I think, was a, a great job by United. They kept their lead, they kept composure, they clutched up, and uh, they used streets uh, effectively. I think as well, uh, Scrap, Scraps kind of touched on it. It's just the amount that they, they were taking the flag, they were getting there. Uh, it's the final product, you know, if, if you're getting stunned, if you're getting uh, needed. The trades, I think, uh, were the things that Unilad lacked. They were kind of making the initial engagements. They were doing kind of almost a hard job, yeah. uh, but it was the simple stuff which they couldn't capitalize on. Great game out of Silly. I think we touched on it previously as well. Um, for him, an individual performance, which I think he can be proud of, but you can't really, you can't be proud of anything right now. If you lose the game five, you just, you, you gutted. Yeah, I mean, Unilad, uh, you sort of heard Scraps talk about it. He feels like their CTF's a bit weak. Uh, and I think the thing might be is that maybe they need an adjustment, right? You, f you feel like on the hardpoint maps, like St. Marie and London Docks, they play very aggressive. They're winning those games, right? Like, they probably should have won this St. Marie hardpoint. I would love to see in, in the sort of break that they have, try to transition to a different CTF map. Like, there's some North American teams who are just way too good at Forest, and that's the one where they're just losing. I'd love to see them play a Flock Tower on London Docks and, and try to hold their own. Yeah, maybe something a, a little bit different. Of course, yeah. uh, they can obviously go home now and uh, maybe practice a, a different map, try and make it one of the preferred. But of course, we, we go over towards St. Marie du Mans, and honestly, this is one the Unilab boys are going to look back on and kind of kick themselves for throwing away. They have a monstrous lead. They get fully streaked out on a couple of players. Uh, and then all of a sudden, United find their way back into the game, Phil. Yeah, it's so hard when you're analyzing a map like this because you want to give so much credit to Unilad for being so strong and so good at the initials. But then it, it's like it all just went away. And I think Chance spoke about it in the final Search and Destroy is they're so good at when they're just on a roll. But when they start using streaks it, uh, and things go so well, it falls apart this is obviously the rotation onto that parking lot where Unilad were just trying to get in just trying to contest for one more second I think they do contest for like half a second but it doesn't make the tick it doesn't stop it one it needed like one more yep. uh, I think Unilad didn't realize that because you obviously saw those yellow arrows rotating uh, too little too late but very very good opening completely the opposite of sometimes what Epsilon is uh, but it just I don't know if they kind of got too excited. You know, these are, I would still say, quite kind of inexperienced players, yeah. some of them on Unilad. So uh, maybe that got a, a little bit too much. Well, I, I think the big thing was going to that parking lot is, well, you saw RCs rotate very early on. He was able to control it, but they trade him out. That gives Unilad spawns. United, they sort of spawn in, a, in the back corner, but RCs comes back, wins a big one-on-one -on -one versus Scraps. While his team is hitting the back as, and he wins that, he hit, he pinches the front. He's able to pick up two. If RCs doesn't win the initial gunfight or, uh, you know, at that front of that hard point, that game's over. So it was a great job by RC is a huge play from him. Most well, definitely was. And then at this point, of course, we're heading into a game five. And oh, ha, ha. you're instantly thinking, oh, no. <laughs> this is bad news for, for the Unilad boys. It's, it's happening again. Could it potentially be another game five loss? And I mean, it started off as if it was going to be that way, Phil. Obviously, United go up two rounds to O. Oh. Silly has streaks. The problem was, Silly just couldn't use those streaks for a, a significant amount of time in the game. Yeah, you lose the hard point like they did. You go in, you go 2 0 down instantly. And uh, the reason that I brought, brought up inexperience in this team is because I wanted to actually give credit to them in Search and Destroy because it seemed like they were the most experienced, you know, veteran types-esque player. They, they just kept so well composed. Again, Scraps, kind of the numbers that this guy is putting up. I think he put 14 up in the first Search and Destroy. He, he put double digits in the second Search and Destroy. You know, he can pull a sniper out on a game like, on a map, sorry, like London Docks. He'll pull up the PPSH, the FG. Such a versatile player. And I think Scraps is someone who I'll be watching for, you know, many years to come, maybe develop, maybe kind of grow into, right. you know, a team which could be classed as one of the best in Europe. It's funny, you mentioned the sniper pullout. Such a smart play from him because he was one off streaks, right? Mm -hmm. So he pulled out the sniper, played a little bit more passive, got the first blood.
got himself some streaks as well. So uh, some pretty smart micro plays coming out from Unilite. Yeah, definitely. But I think yeah, a ton of mistakes out of United, yeah. right? So I, I think that one round where they're up two to one, they get the bomb down or, or two zero. Sorry, uh, Silly earned streaks. They're in a four v three retake and the bombs planted. And I would have loved to see Silly scraps absolutely destroys him in that round. But I would have yeah. loved to see him sort of call in one of those score streaks, just waste more time. And again, we we've talked about it with a lot of different players. As soon as you get score streaks, it sort of changes the mentality of the team. It sort of makes them have to play around those score streaks, but they switch things up. It doesn't go their way. There was also another round where they get the bomb down at A, and they instantly get retaken. You just can't allow that to happen. You have to play around your numbers. I, I think there were some big mistakes from United. Yep, definitely were, and because of that, United now will go ahead of them in the yep. standing. So a big, big result to them. Congratulations to the European boys there on a 3-2 victory.